the objective of this lab is for us to determine the order of crystal violet when it reacts with sodium hydroxide. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to actually track how the concentration of crystal violet changes over a specific amount of time. And the question becomes, well, how do we determine the concentration of crystal violet? Well, because crystal violet is a gorgeous purple solution, we can use spectrophotometry in order to determine the concentration. So what we're going to have to do, just like what we did in the shell casing lab, we need to first create a Beer's Law curve. And we do that by determining specific concentrations that we want. And in your lab book, it's noted, we start with 25 micromolar and we get all the way down to 2.5 micromolar solution of crystal violet. We will create those solutions first. You guys will do the math. I'll check it and then I'll create it for you. And then we're going to determine the absorbance of those five different concentrations and use those different absorbances and concentrations, plot them in order to create a Beer's Law curve. Okay, so let's first make our solution. So pause this video and you guys now need to determine the volume of crystal violet that you'll need to create each of the different concentrations that are given to you. So to create all my different solutions, I'm first going to take the stock solution and fill a cubet with that because I want one solution that has a concentration of 25 micromolar. Remember the exact volume that I add here, because it's going to have a concentration of 25 micromolar, doesn't matter as long as it is high enough that the electromagnetic radiation can pass through. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop right there. And the reason why I stop fairly close, fairly far down, is simply so that it won't spill over when I put it in the spectrophotometer. Okay. Let's create my next solution. So to create my 12.5 micromolar solution, what you should have noted is you're going to need five mils of your stock solution. So I'm going to use my volumetric pipette. I'm going to scroll up. Okay. And that will give me five mils. Okay. I'm going to add that to my graduated cylinder. And then I'm going to I'm going to add it the rest of the way with water so that the final volume will be 10 mils. Okay. Now, important thing to note, this is mixing quite nicely. When I add this to my cuvette, however, I don't want to add all 10 mils because it'll actually overflow the cuvette because the cuvette is pretty much exactly 10 mils. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just I'm going to swirl it around, make sure it's nice and mixed. And then I'm going to pour into my cuvette, but I'm going to stop short of the top. Okay. So remember, I created my solution. The entire solution that's in this graduated cylinder has a concentration of 12.5 micromolar. So it doesn't matter how much I end up pouring into the cuvette itself. Everything that's in here has a concentration of 12.5 micromolar. Okay. So that's my next solution. Okay. I'm going to clean out my graduated cylinder. I'm now going to create my 10 micromolar solution. So to do that, I need four mils of my concentrated solution. So I'm going to pull up four mils using my volumetric pipette. So I added a little bit too much. So I'm going to actually show you me. I'm going to hit the button right here and it's going to release a little bit. So I only want four mils, so now I have four mils here. I'm going to add that to my graduated cylinder. Okay. I'm going to add the rest of the way with water to get ten mils. Again, I'm going to mix. Swirl it. If you wanted to put parafilm on top and invert it, you totally can. So that is my next solution. Again, remember, I'm not going to add it all the way to the top because I don't want to possibly spill in my spectrophotometer and destroy a $1,500 tool. So I'm going to just fill it up that tall. Again, doesn't matter how tall I fill it up. I used my graduated cylinder to get that final volume of 10 mils. So I know I have the concentration that I want. Okay. So 
That was my 10 micromolar solution. Now I'm going to get my 7.5 micromolar solution. And I'm going to do that by measuring 3 mils of my concentrated solution. Okay, so I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to a little bit short. So now I've got three mils here. Okay. Before I can add that to my cuvette, I need to add it to my cleaned out graduated cylinder. Okay. I'm going to fill this the rest of the way up with water. So this is my 7.5 micromolar solution. And so again, notice when I filled it all the way to the top, right, that's going to spill. So I'm going to pour it a little bit into my trash can. Okay, that's much better. I can even add a little bit more. Now I need to make the 5 micromolar solution. So I'm going to add 2 mils of my concentrated solution. I think I'd said I'm making 5 solutions. I'm actually making 6 of different concentration. Okay, so I got my two mils here. I'm gonna add that to my graduated cylinder. Then add enough water to get 10 mils, and that will give me my five micromolar solution. Again, I should be doing all of this on the table. And I'm checking it. Obviously, I'm wanting to show you what I'm doing. I'm going to pour this into my cuvette. Again, don't pour it all the way to the top. And one last solution. I need to make my 2.5 micromolar solution. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to measure just one mil of my stock solution. And then I'm going to add it the rest of the way with water. Get a final volume of 10 mils. Finish it off with the pipette. All right, so I'm going to show you all six of my different concentrated solutions. So here are my six different concentrated solutions. Notice right here, I've got my 2.5 micromolar solution all the way to my 25 micromolar solution, which is 10 times as strong. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take them, put them into the spectrophotometer and read out the absorbances because then when I have my concentration and I have my absorbance, I can then create a Beer's lock curve. So let's go do that right now. All right, so here's my spe spectrophotometer. I, before I start, before I can zero, my spectrophotometer, I need to decide what wavelength I'm going to use. So based on that curve that you guys saw, um, what I'm hoping you guys came to the conclusion about was that you can either set the wavelength, there are two different wavelengths you can set it to, either 540 or 610. So I'm going to just set it to 540. Okay. And now I don't need to deal with wavelength or worry about wavelength again. The next step that I need to do now is I need to zero it. So I'm gonna get my water sample. Okay, this is distilled water. I'm gonna wipe it off with a Kim wipe. I'm gonna put it into the spectrophotometer. And I'm going to zero my spectrophotometer. Okay, 100% transmittance, zero absorbance, what I want. I'm gonna start with the 25 micromolar solution and then I'm gonna go in decreasing order. So 25 all the way down to 2.5. So the, the first solution, I'm gonna pull this out, I'm gonna do is the 25 micromolar solution. Wipe it with Kim White. Put it into my spectrophotometer. And that's the absorbance you should read. Okay, I'm gonna do the next one. This is my 12.5 micromolar solution. Wipe it off with a Kim wipe. Okay, so 12.5 micromolar. Okay. 
10 micromolar is the next one. Seven point five micromolar is the next. Okay. Five micromolar is the next one. And notice my absorbances are decreasing as concentration decreases, which is exactly what I would expect. Okay. My last one is my 2.5 micromolar. So this is the whole point of the lab, this moment right here. We're gonna allow sodium hydroxide, five mils of sodium hydroxide, and five mils of crystal violet to react with one another. When crystal violet reacts with sodium hydroxide, it will become colorless, and so that enables us to determine the order of crystal violet reacting with sodium hydroxide. What we're gonna do, we're going to add the two solutions together and immediately put them into the spectrophotometer. We're gonna measure the absorbance of this solution every 20 seconds for 15 minutes. And by measuring the absorbances, we can then use the Beer's Law curve we just created in order to determine the concentration and therefore plot how concentration changes, the concentration of crystal violet changes over time. And that way, using the different graphs you guys learned about, you can actually determine what order crystal violet is. If it's zero order, first order, or second order. So I'm first gonna add the five mils of sodium hydroxide to my cuvette. Okay. And then I'm going to add the five mils of the crystal violet. Now this is gonna get a little bit hectic. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, mi I'm gonna add it, I'm gonna mix it, and then I'm going to immediately put it into the spectrophotometer. I'm gonna shout out to you the first absorbance that I, that I read, that'll be T equals zero seconds. And then every 20 seconds, you guys need to record the absorbance that you see. And I'll shout out each 20 second interval to you, okay? So the first one's gonna be me shouting it out. And then by the time that the next 20 seconds hits, I'll have the spectrophotometer in your view so that you can start recording yourself, okay? violet to the cuvette. I'm going to mix it very quickly and then I'm going to immediately add it to the spectrophotometer. Mix by pulling it up quickly. Okay. It is now mixed. I'm not going to add all of it to this. Okay. Quickly wipe it with a Kim wipe, put it in and I'm going to read out the first reading to you. The first absorbance is 0.407. Okay, so I'm starting my stopwatch right now. 